There is a chat there. Yeah. But yes. People say that. I, I don't see it here. It's chat. I can see that. People say, mm -hmm. did they take one? Yeah. 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 Right. So my okay. So I'm I'm heard. Okay then. <clears throat> so hello guys. Uh, welcome uh, to our <laughs> our uh, event online. Uh, before we actually start, um, we will not have uh, any breaks in our presentation. So if you have any questions or uh, didn't catch anything, can you please put it in the, in the chat and we will be uh, responding um, to these questions. At the end, I will offer you an um, uh, email address that you can write any more queries if you have. So, um, Supernova Startups, <laughs> we started about uh, our activities in 2019. Uh, there are three of us. We, we used to work for other ventures and other startups where some of them were successful, some of them were not that uh, successful. Uh, during our, our experiences, we also noticed other startups uh, uh, and their failures as well. Um, the one of the most common failures we saw was um, uh, pursuing an idea with a fundamental flow of addressing market or a customer needs. And um, um, the, these, the, the, this idea actually fade, faded away before even actually founders realized that. They are spending their own, their own funds, their own savings quite often, and a lot of effort and they didn't keep their eyes wide open to actually realize that it's time for a little change so they did not have they were not able to even soft pivot the, the whole the whole project um, <clears throat> uh, then usually at the end they feel extremely stressed uh, frustrated and disappointed um, you see we we've actually done that ourselves we've been there we, we experienced ourselves the same pain um, and we also were what are the traps waiting for, for you. And um, we would like to be actually working, we would like to work with the founders uh, that engaged, uh, that not engaged in such a race. So before they engaged in such a race, ideally we would like to work with startups at the very early idea stage we can help them to visualize uh, the solution for the problem that probably they, don't, uh, they didn't find it yet uh, and work out the strategy, strategy of, uh, of moving forward. And we ideally would like to work with uh, other groups of entrepreneurs and let me actually point this few uh, with female uh, founders, with uh, mature entrepreneurs as well with under underprivileged uh, founders, let me explain it in a bit of a in a minute. Um, there are a lot of support for, especially for young entrepreneurs, um, and we believe that uh, female founders, as well as mature founders, would might find much easier to relate to us. Uh, we've been around for a while, and uh, maybe we will have found uh, kind of have a common language and understanding. Um, however, what makes us different from other startups, from other startup support organizations, is um, we will be channeling part of our revenues towards uh, other less privileged regions uh, like Asia and Africa, for example. So, in effect, we would become some kind of seed investors uh, for, these, uh, for these founders. We are currently working on establishing these particular channels. Another way, another thing I want to mention about uh, how we further accommodating these um, underprivileged is they don't have access to banking system. So we will be accepting uh, crypto payments that would allow them to uh, avoid these um, banking issues. Uh, however, there was a very quick um, introduction to what we do. Um, let me introduce, let me go back to introduce uh, next uh, presenter, Tatiana. Uh, I will need to change the microphone one second. Yes, Tatiana is on now. Uh, are you on, Tatiana? No, no, it doesn't work. 
I cannot unmute you. I cannot. Okay. okay. Yes, you are there. Yes. You. Okay. So the, the, the topic today is from survival to revival and I'm Tatiana Zalan, I'm Dr. Tatiana Zalan and in my, what I do in my job, I am a professor of business at the American University in Dubai. But I've also built, um, been academic advisor to a number of startups, including to supernova startups. So welcome everyone. I'll very quickly go through uh, what are some of the trends that we see in the world today, of course, as they apply to startups what do we see in the MENA region, again, very quickly, and some of the more attractive sectors of the economy where you probably would like to start a startup if, if you haven't done uh, so yet, and also some general recommendations of what we can do um, as in, in the startup world to make sure that our startups survive and then revive. And in, that will be part one of me, then I'll, uh, then Nas will be talking about some specific challenges uh, with funding and, and we all know that the, these are really big challenges and you will see then part two of me when I will be talking specifically about some of the challenges that leaders of startups face. So let's uh, start going with um, some of the uh, general trends. We decided to go really, really very long tech and not to use any slides. So I'll, I'll be just talking to you guys. Um, and there is an, this notion with uh, the pandemic that the pandemic has accelerated many of the tre trends that were already there, and this is certainly true. Uh, what are some of the trends that, uh, that we can see? Distance is back, and it has always been back. If you actually look at some of the um, operations of multinationals, for example, of a very good um, indicator of distance, you would see that Five years ago, they started to retreat from international markets. And of course, now it's all exacerbated by things like protectionism, more restrictive immigration and visa policies. So the, the world is becoming more and more uh, localized. Automation is upon us. And uh, there have been lots uh, of uh, studies, including by McKinsey, that show that um, automation by 2030 will affect something like uh, 400 million to 8 million jobs around the world. Um, or what else is going on? More government inter intervention. And it's very clear that uh, citizens uh, today are very much more accepting of government intervention. Um, of, um, and that's probably because the, the, the governments all over the world have announced a stimulus that amounts to something like over $10 trillion, that's, that's a lot of dollars um, that are dedicated to this. And finally, consumer needs are changing as well. If you look at the uh, famous Maslow's hierarchy of needs where you have self-actualization um, um, and esteem and love and belonging, safety needs and uh, physiological needs, where do you think most of the needs are um, for the people today? They're at the bottom of the hierarchy. So if your business model is served the top of the hierarchy, you clearly need to revise your business model because that's not what people are really looking for at the moment. So that's changing consumer behavior. And I don't also need to convince you that there is a lot of turmoil and changing industry structures and new digital models are coming in. So what's happening in the mean very quickly? Uh, what's, what's been the impact? Well, it, it's probably, uh, it's not a secret to anyone, it's a public secret actually, that uh, the economic uncertainty has resulted in a very negative impact on just over 70% of startups. And I'm just consulting uh, some of the notes, and that's a very um, recent report on what's happening in the MENA. So 71% of startups um, are affected with very high impact, extremely negative impact as well. And which um, of the areas have been affected mostly? Um, well, it's growth and business development, not surprisingly. And now, uh, as companies are shifting away from growth and ex expansion, they're uh, more in favor of prioritizing product development and also adjusting their business model uh, to sustain operations. So growth and business development, the second part of it is operations have been affected a lot. And of course, funding, and this is what NAS is going 
um, to, uh, to talk about. But it's not all um, doom and gloom. There are areas that will be significant opportunities going forward. And one of them is education. Education has been in turmoil for quite some time. And now what we see, the emergence of really interesting business models. And I think one of the main um, developments here, what we can see is that consumers are increasingly accepting of different degrees, different colleges, alternative colleges. So things like alternative MBAs and, and colleges that use very different uh, payment structures, for example, income sharing arrangements are becoming very popular, uh, as well as last mile providers, bridging education and employment. And uh, Lambda is a very good example here. It's a coding school. In the wellness and mental health area, we also see lots of developments um, and in particular with severe mental illnesses such as OCD and bipolar disorder, uh, the healthcare system, particularly in the US, is severely affected. 20 billion a month is being spent on, on these sorts of severe diseases. So uh, startups that are doing really well are focusing in these areas. And I'm not talking just about apps and um, mental health apps, but really monitoring and measuring tools using quite sophisticated technology like digital biomarkers, for example. Um, and um, one of the interesting developments here is, um, well, um, uh, startups like uh, Mira and, and also startup, no, it's not a startup, but Lululemon acquired Mira uh, it, and it's a home training um, uh, well, a startup. Uh, uh, a lot of interesting things there. Uh, where else um, uh, something is, is happening, health and telemedicine. It, telemedicine was almost zero before the pandemic. Now it's growing at a um, really unprecedented space and almost 100% of medicine has become all of a sudden uh, telemedicine. And another one, another trend that we are really passionate about is uh, um, has to do with demographics and healthcare. And um, again, we are not talking here about prolonging lives. And uh, yes, we can all live in, into our 80s and 90s and 100s. But the, the big game here now is longevity, and particularly as it, it concerns the work life. So expanding the work life um, and, and also your um, your life as well. So uh, in Silicon Valley, we see a really interesting startups doing um, deep tech, uh, molecular biology, and this is going on. Um, uh, this is going to continue. Um, another interesting sector, and all of those are trillion dollar sectors and where uh, things are happening is of course financial services. If you are into blockchain and cryptocurrencies, have a look at uh, the so-called DeFi, decentralized finance, which is just a group of startups that uh, are working in this area, some really interesting things there. But one of the areas that has been really underrepresented uh, in financial services is the gig economy. The gig economy will be, will, will, um, will grow um, exponentially, particularly with the advent of um, automation, people will lose jobs. Um, and uh, this part of the sector has very specific needs that are not being served by the traditional financial system. So inconsistent and unpredictable income patterns, credit needs, health and insurance needs, and tax requirements, these are not being met in the gig economy. So maybe something for you guys to think about. Um, let me just talk for the, another two minutes about survival and a revival. Uh, for your startup to survive, if you, uh, you really, and it's coming from the military, it's a formula that says that your survival is the function of the speed of your understanding of the situation, the magnitude of the pivots, of the cuts or the lifeboat choices that you need to make, and the speed of your time to make those choices. So speed appears twice. It's not the time for uh, huge committees, consultations, uh, study groups, and widespread
great consensus building. You really need to focus on the survival of a startup and make all these dramatic changes. So what kind of changes can you make? Um, it, you know, I'm sure you're all familiar with the so-called business model canvas, and that's just a way of looking at your business in a holistic way. So you can go through each and every of those elements of the business model canvas and see how you can rethink what you've been doing so far. And it's absolutely mandatory because all the, um, the consumer choices, consumer preferences have changed in consumer enterprise um, and, and enterprise and as well, and, and also us normally consumers, all of that uh, consumer behavior has changed. So very uh, important to go through the business model and canvas and see what pivots can you make. And one of the most maybe interesting pivots to make is to look at the opportunities to buy and acquire. Now resources and talent in particular are cheap, and this is the time to build a company. Um, you can also go, and you should go, um, that's a recommendation, if you haven't done so, uh, doing your customer discovery and validation once again, because again, coming back to this idea that everything has changed, you need to do it for all your customer segments. And there are really good frameworks for that, like Steve Blank, uh, Four Steps to the Epiphany, and how you do that. Um, and my final comment here is just a revival is needed too. And what we will see going forward, I think a lot of, is that um, a lot of companies will not have very high gross margins. So uh, yes, gross margins are important, but they are not, um, just focusing on gross margins is a little bit myopic. There are very, uh, quite a few very good companies like Apple and Netflix and Nike and Starbucks that are not very high growth, uh, high gross margin businesses. And we will see um, more of a low margin businesses appearing. And uh, this is t totally okay. But if you have a business like that, and you probably will, then you need to uh, pay particular attention to your competitive modes. Things like your economies of scale, making sure that you're, um, and, and that's just a cost advantage relative to your competition. You have differentiated tech and that you, know, you have intellectual property, you have pricing power, and perhaps your customers are willing to pay a high price. Network effects, extremely important. So how do you measure engagement, growing engagement, organic growth um, in your total wallet share for supply and demand, and finally your direct brand power. So you need um, things like um, some of the metrics that you may want to look at are increasing your organic and direct traffic um, and decreasing customer acquisition costs are watching this metric as well if you want your business to revive. So I will stop here and I will pass on to Nas who will talk about funding businesses and the, the challenges we have there. Thank you, Tatiana. Um, I'm Naz Ahmed. Um, my background is in finance. I am a chartered accountant. I've worked in tech, um, giving financial advice to uh, C-suite level um, uh, individuals within the company. Um, I'm the finance and idea generating director at Supernova Startups, and I'm also the managing partner at Goldshaw. I'll be talking about the different financing options available and how small businesses can weather the COVID crisis by surviving and then rebuilding. So firstly, what's happening about getting financed and are investors funding businesses like yours? So firstly, currently, um, investors are following a wait and see approach. Startups need to brace for fewer seed rounds and deals will be made, but there will be fewer of them. So what's actually happening for um, advice at the moment is for startups looking to raise money, having a strong product demo and a well thought through plan growth during the downturn will be crucial for getting funding uh, from investors currently. So as companies pivot, many uh, VCs will be put, putting their full attention 
into um, deals that will be focusing with the current climate that would um, directly affect what's happening right now. Uh, there is um, consensus that businesses providing services relating to the current pandemic during um, COVID-19 are likely to remain um, uh, an option for VCs to, to actually fund. But overall, there is a slowing down now of um, deals by VCs and any type of funding. So ways to raise money. Um, one of the primary ways to do this is to focus on the founders themselves, friends and family. So it's hard at the moment to raise money if you are a startup. So the best method, which is low cost and speedy, would be to um, get the money from friends and family or to invest it in there yourself because that would be um, the easiest for you. And plus you get a more relaxed approach from your friends and family. Another method is microfinance loans. The microfinance loans provide um, capital for small businesses that might not fit the criteria that large financial inst institutions um, are looking for. And so they might struggle to get finance from those institutions, but also from um, crowdfunding and other sources of finance. So with microfinance loans, the interest rates are usually between um, 8 and 13%, so they are a lot higher. And the average um, micro loan is usually around $13,000, so, so that is a route you can take. Um, crowdfunding is another way of raising money. So what crowdfunding is, it's the financing of a new project by raising small amounts of money from a large number of people. Um, it's usually carried out via um, online platforms. Um, there's Kickstarter, Indiegogo, so there are a number of platforms there that, you, that can be used. What happens is prospective entrepreneurs who seek funding on a crowdfunding platform also need to be able to understand that there are lots of rules that are applied within gaining the financing and what they need to know is there are usually targets that are set by the platform and if you don't achieve those targets you actually lose out on any funding at all so you need to know about all these different rules and regulations that the platform actually puts in place um, another, the, the traditional way of raising um, funds is by bank loans. Um, bank loans are the most commonly used source of funding for small and medium sized businesses. However, in the UAE, it is so difficult to open an account and then in turn to get an actual loan for the small business. So in, in these instances, you have to then um, Take um, other options by um, extending your um, credit card facilities or to try to get personal loans if you're a founder to actually uh, put the money into the business. Um, accelerate, there's accelerator programs and business incubators as well that you can actually join. Um, there's um, angel investors who are uh, rich individuals who take an interest in startups, but these are mainly from the um, emerging technologies and tech, um, te technology based companies dealing with artificial intelligence and so on. Um, then there's the venture capital. Um, this type of capital. Um, is a form of early stage financing sought by the small startups. But the venture capitalists in return would usually want um, equity ownership um, and their payback terms are quite strict. So um, the next thing I'll be looking at is assistance that is available. Um, and there, in, in, the, in the UAE, there are a number of grants and funding that have been specifically made available to uh, small companies during the COVID-19 period. Um, currently, the Abu Dhabi Executive Council has announced 15 initiatives under its Ghadan 21 scheme, and they are offering projects up to 50 million dirhams. 
So um, what will happen is if you're interested um, in these uh, different schemes, uh, just send an email and uh, I'll be able to forward you a number of uh, the schemes that are available currently to help um, the startups. There's also the Sharjah Entrepreneurship Center. Um, they've pledged $1 million of fund to help um, startups that are weathering the COVID storm at the moment. Um, there's the Shera, uh, which is also based in Sharjah, and they are actually offering learning resources for startups currently. There's also um, uh, the Ambassador, which offers free benefits and advertising to UAE SMEs. So um, in MENA, there's the Endeavor Global, which is creating an open source library for entrepreneurs to use. Um, there's also um, banks that are actually um, making relief packages available to their customers. Um, there's 17 initiatives for um, startups and SMEs um, that are being um, impacted by the coronavirus. You have um, also Abu Dhabi Global Markets, um, which are uh, also trying to offer support to their customers. Currently, there is the ADGM Courts. What they're doing is, if you need any legal assistance um, with regard to any issue you are facing, they will actually um, provide no cost um, assistance to um, people who have limited financial means at the moment. Um, we also have Astrolabs themselves. They're offering a 240,000 dirham grant to help tech entrepreneurs launch their new startups. So um, they're also offering digital scholarships. Um, there's um, also Elevision Media who are providing 4 million in free advertising to help market and provoke, well, promote the um, local SMEs affected by the COVID-19 crisis. So there, there, there is a large number of um, projects and packages available to SMEs currently within the UAE. The next part um, of my presentation will cover the fact of whether sink or swim, startups need to keep their head above the water. So firstly, what one of the most important things for startups currently is that they need to be in control of their cash management. Cash flow forecasting, they need to conserve their cash to reduce um, large fixed costs. So somehow they need to start cutting those costs. Um, things like company cars and other office equipment, they just need to try to sell it. Um, consider new revenue streams, um, for instance, if you were an exporter abroad, abroad and um, the borders have been closed, what you need to now do is focus maybe on local markets or research any other countries where the borders are still open and, and you can do this. But one of the most important things is to do some kind of weekly cash flow. Uh, the next thing is um, you need to review your bank statements. Take a look at how much capital um, you have in your bank account. Um, subtract all your bills that, have, uh, that you have to pay in the next 30 days and then divide that into your monthly cash burn rate. What will happen is it will give you um, the runway of how many months you have available with the current capital in your account. So, your goal is to survive and then thrive. Okay. Um, next, what you need to also do is to ask your team for any ideas before you look outside to get advice. There's great ideas that can come from the most unexpected places within your specific company and even junior members who um, you think uh, might not have ideas, that they can be there and they can come up with some great ideas, definitely. Um, what you need to do is discard rotten tomatoes. What you need to do is get rid of customers who give you a low return, but then they take up a high amount of your time and resources. These customers um, ask for huge discounts, but then when it actually comes to paying, 
um, you have to chase and chase and they take a long time and use up a lot of resources within small startups that can be used for other things. So you really have to decide which customers you want to keep and which ones you need to discard. Offer remote services. So consider what kind of remote services you might offer to your clients. Um, this might be um, applicable for companies that work with B2B. What you need to do is um, maybe allow your team to work from home. Um, employees have learned very quickly how to use all the latest digital communication. So maybe um, that is one idea to, to get your employees to work from home so that you can um, use the capacity within your offices for other things. Um, review your marketing spend. What you need to do is turn off underperforming or non essential ads. Um, look at your cost of acquisition. Look at the short-term value um, to the company from those ads. Are the ads gaining, gaining revenue-generating clients or are they just using up your funds? So you need to think about these things. Um, consider selling some investments. Now, if you've used some of the money from the company and invested it, what you might need to do is to increase your um, runway, you might have to um, bring that money into the business and, and sell those investments. Another thing is to reduce the office space and renegotiate your rents. Renegotiate rent or scale back on your office space if you can. Companies based um, in co-working spaces based on a month-to-month -month basis are a lot fle more flexible and are saving more money rather than having to have the contract set for office space with landlords. So the, the next thing is focus on credit control. If you have outstanding debts, um, you have to be careful not to compromise your relationship with the actual customer but you need to bring the money in. So it's, a, it's a, a balancing act. What you have to do is you need to bring the money in, but you also know that your clients are also going through tough times. So you have to keep the relationship on an even keel. Um, what you also need to do is ask for um, extension of um, payment terms from your suppliers. You need to negotiate um, flexibility in payment terms um, ask, ask them, uh, give them a true um, picture of what your financial situation is and then ask them if you can pay in smaller installments. Um, there are a lot of uh, these things going on currently, so you should make that connection with your suppliers and do that. Um, what you need to also do is maybe salary cuts for the short term, but you need to lead by example. So you at the top will also need to take salary cuts to show the others in your team. Um, it could be 20 to 30 percent, um, but what it does is it gives uh, it, you actually prevent um, the option of having to make redundancies then because we're actually cutting the costs and you don't have to go any deeper with those kind of things. So the next thing is um, think twice before you offer freebies. So you need to extend your runway through revenues that will be coming in. So just be careful how many things you give away for free. So um, that, that is something um, people will ask for things to be uh, for free, but you just can't do that. So re-evaluate your whole business um, model as well. So what you need to do is, um, if things aren't working, stop the service or the product. Don't keep trying to prove that it will work. Um, it's be best to cut your costs as soon as possible. So it's nice to have a product or service um, which is of an important need to individuals rather than something which is a nice to have. So there are things that you really need to focus on um, and look at um, changing the model. So um, so what you also need to do is um, offer discounts. So. To attract customers, you'll, you'll have to tighten um, your expenditure, but also 
um, you'll need to offer discounts to bring in um, new clients and new customers. What you also need to do is review any online subscriptions. Uh, if you have lots of um, uh, platforms that you have subscriptions on, um, and you, you can't just keep on blindly paying if they're not really giving you value for money. So you need to go through those and um, start um, ending, ending the subscriptions because it's vital because every cost um, that's going out will, has to now be controlled. Um, what, you, <clears throat> what you also need to do is uh, call key clients. You need to keep the relationship um, going and if you can see that they're struggling it's good to show them support um, and it strengthens your relationship so keep in touch with your clients and talk to them and, and um, just provide support if you can. So um, Another thing that you can do is reduce your office space and renegotiate the rents. Um, a lot of companies are actually doing that at the moment. So if you are in a, in a large office, um, it, a good thing would be to renegotiate and also think about allowing your team to work from home. Um, also, um, what you need to do is um, look at um, any case studies that are out there. Um, so, uh, I'll just give you an example of something that's happened. Now, there was um, a Singapore-based car rental company um, whose revenues fell 95% in February. With the roads empty, so they were a car rental company, with the roads empty, the company leaders were really worried about how people were going to use their car rental business. So instead, what they did was they reacted um, like a startup. They invested in data analytics and they listened using social media of what's actually happening out there with their customers. What they discovered was that a lot of tech firms were telling their employees not to use the public transport system. So the car rental company got in touch with a lot of businesses and they actually asked them to use their rental cars um, at a discount rate. And in that way, they were keeping the employees safe and they were also building up their business. So what actually happened was they um, actually ended up um, making just as much money as they were before. So um, the next thing is, how do you rebuild? How do you rebuild the company? So one of the things is you need to assess if you need funding to recover. Make plans on how you will achieve this. Choose the method easily available to you. One of the things also is to be patient in securing funding. It takes a long time to um, get funding from VCs and angels. And what you need to do is during this period, you need to um, focus and try to grow the company um, using other methods. The most important thing is to close financial tracking, keep a close idea on financial tracking. Keep, uh, what you need to do is to adjust your plans according to what's happening to your business. Reduce your fixed costs and main, uh, that's what your main objective is. Uh, maintain and build the best talent. So small focus teams within your startup are very important. And if you have to rethink the whole organization, um, it's something that you might have to do during this time. One of the things um, that's happened from COVID-19 is the rise of the camel. The camel is the, referred to startups that have to now follow the resilience Cautious, being cautious, um, being committed and customer focused. So it's, that is now what is happening with a lot of startups. They have to be committed to long term success rather than quick wins. They have to focus on positive financials and they need to rebuild moving forwards. Customers are vital during this period and the relationship 
has to be nurtured and grown during this period. So um, I will now pass on to Tatiana. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Am I unmuted? No, you are. Yeah, okay. I'll just quickly uh, wrap up um, some, some advice uh, for CEOs, for startup, uh, startup founders from kind of the leadership perspective. Um, and this advice, m most of it comes from Ben Horowitz. Ben Horowitz is a very famous Silicon Valley uh, investor. And Andreessen Horowitz is a company which is uh, very, very successful. And he's also been what we call wartime uh, entrepreneur, wartime CEO. And the challenges for him were quite different from um, kind of crisis, just crisis management or uh, peaceful peacetime CEOs. And um, it, he, at the time, he, uh, the, the company recovered or was coming out of the tech, bo uh, tech boom and bust. So, um, and, and through 2000 to 2007, he was leading the company that was, um, had uh, really bad publicity. They went for an IPO at the most unfortunate time because they just couldn't raise money any other way. Uh, the uh, NASDAQ was all after them because their, their stock well, was not very, um, was not doing really well. So he's been through a number of um, uh, crisis within these seven years of, um, when he was the wartime CEO. And this is his advice, which he very clearly articulated in his book. And if you haven't ever read the, the, uh, this wonderful book, The Hard Thing About Hard Things, that's the one to read. It's for, for CEOs in particular, in hard times. So um, one of his uh, pieces of advice is that do not allow truth to become first casualty. If you run a company, you will experience overwhelming psychological pressure to be overly positive. Uh, stand up to this pressure and tell people as it is. So avoid this positivity delusion. Um, make sure you um, build trust and communication during that time. And uh, remember that in good companies, bad news travel fast and good news travel slow. And that's actually good because given enough eyeballs, then all bugs are shallow. People will help you to find a solution to the worst problem if you tell them honestly what the problem is all about. And ditch the old management standard, don't bring me a problem without bringing me a solution. Well, if an engineer is bringing you a problem, which is an, a marketing department's problem, well, is it his fault? No. So the whole company needs to address the issue. Is there a right way to lay people off? Yes, there is. And if you want to, to have a look at the more recent example of the right way to lay people off, it's from Brian Chesky, Airbnb. He did it really well, um, both in terms of communication, but also in a very humane way. And his, um, his employees got a rather good deal. Um, he was comment uh, commented on and um, lauded in the press for, for doing that. But from Ben Horowitz, the advice is don't delay the layoffs. As, um, as soon as you decide to do that, do that. Be clear why you're laying people, people off. Come clean. It's the company that's failing. It's not the people. So you need to let go of some excellent people. Tell them about that. Don't sort of shift the blame. Train your managers. Managers must lay their, people, their own people off. It's not the job of the HR department. Don't outsource it uh, because people are thinking Thinking, if you hide, hide me, you need to have the courage to fire me as well. Uh, once you decide about the, um, about the layoffs, don't slice the salami. Address the entire company. This is the message for those who are staying. And don't escape as soon as you do that. Be visible, be present, be engaging, be helpful to, to people who are leaving because these people will remember you. Um, also, talk to people. Uh, being a CEO is really very, very uh, psychologically demanding. So, talk to friends, advisors, mentors, coaches, find them. Get it out of your head and onto the paper. If you're thinking about a major strategic move, a major pivot, then put it down on paper. In racing, they always tell them focus on the road 
not the wall because if you are focusing on the wall then you'll get hit and this is why he's saying you need to be really focused on what you're doing don't quit if you look uh, if you ask a brilliant ceo about what um, what they they have been doing why they sort of survived they will all say i didn't quit if you ask a mediocre ceo guess what he will tell you um that's it's because of course um, and don't take it personally. It doesn't help if you give yourself a fail as a CEO in, under these very difficult conditions. You knew that you as a startup founder and you will make mistakes. You, it's a very difficult job. So be careful, be um, very sort of kind to yourself if you wish. There are also some little nuances now as we're coming into this really interesting time, the pandemic, uh, what, and what companies are doing, what leaders are doing, they've discovered it the hard way, that apart from this role as the CEO, you also need to be a therapist in chief. Uh, you need to take care of your me own mental health, of course, but also the people's mental health. Um, and some, some of the things that companies are doing is that, uh, firstly, having a frank uh, question and answer sessions with the entire company, then sending tw um, twice weekly um, video messages detailing the company's financial position, also strategy moving forward, and also very importantly, set time aside to virtually connect with those people who you never spoke before. Maybe it's people who are two or three layers down in the hierarchy, people at the periphery, people at the front line. They need to be heard as well. You need to talk to them. Um, really face to face. And just one last uh, comment from me, be courageous, because every time you make the hard, correct decisions, you become a bit more courageous. And every time you make the easy, wrong decision, you become a little bit more cowardly. If you're the CEO, then these choices will lead to a courageous or a cowardly company. And guess where I'm sure where you want to be. You want to create something courageous and get out of this mess. I'm sure that we will get to the other side. But for, uh, for this to happen, we need guys like you. We need innovators, we need creators, builders, and entrepreneurs to get us to the other side. So I invite you at the end of this presentation to think about what are the kind of things that you want to build. It's very hard to say from, well, what will be in, in two years time, three years time, five years time. Maybe you should be asking yourself, what is inevitable in the next 20 years or even 50 years? And this hasn't been built yet. So I advise you to think about these issues. Thank you guys. From me. Now, Richard. <laughs> uh, it's for me, okay. Uh, okay, um, I'm back. Uh, can you turn it down? Yes, we're in the same room, so. <laughs> uh, well, guys, this is not mm, much I can add to this, uh, apart from a probably little, little short announcement. Um, we are actually quite uh, excited and happy to, to, to say that we are working on a book that actually covers all what we talked about it, uh, in this uh, meeting, and even more, what, what you heard today, if you enjoyed it. If you, whatever you heard is just uh, uh, you know scratching the surface, <clears throat> so later this month we will be very happy to uh, to uh, to offer this book. Uh, if you if you're interested in getting the book, please uh, let us know. I just posted in the in the messages in the chat. I posted our email addresses. But if you can send uh, your request for the book uh, in our general email, which is welcome at supernova. We will definitely, you will be, definitely be the first one to, uh, to see it. Uh, we also would like to tell you now, uh, those of us who attended today this event, um, we would like to offer a free half an hour service, half an hour advice service uh, for, your, for your ideas, for your, for your startup, if you have any queries. However, in order to take full, um, kind of uh, advantage of this time, uh, please send us email before. 
to uh, welcome at uh, Supernova startups and explain exactly what is your your idea, or what stage you're on, what industry you're on, you're on, uh, and what are the the issues you're actually facing. So please let us know uh, about it. I also have something else I would like to. Let me see if I can share the screen. Uh, gosh, I'm first time a host in this uh, Zoom. I'm not quite sure how it works. Uh, yes, share. Can you guys see that? I think you can. Well, we have uh, a giveaway, if you can call it, <laughs> um, this book. Uh, so uh, these are the links. These links also are in the messages, uh, in the chat. So please feel free to, um, uh, to grab the book if you want. Uh, this book is about things you need to know before you actually engage or don't start your business at all. So it's a very important book to have. <laughs> um, any other queries, inquiries, questions, issues you have, please uh, contact us at uh, welcome at supernova. Um, let me see if I can uh, go back to uh, chat. No, I don't, oh, I, don't, I don't see the chat now. Uh, I'm not sure how to get to the chat. Mm. Um, well, I know I'm sharing the screen, so I'm not quite sure how to. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Yes, yes, but, uh, yes. Uh, no, I don't see a chat. I only see people. I'm sorry, guys. I'm uh, still very much learning this process. Uh, I'm not sure. Do I leave I this? See, I can see the chat. So yes. Okay. Uh, so, can you do you see any questions there? Uh, I think there were some questions. Yeah. Well, uh, can you? Okay. Uh, okay, Tatiana, can I pass it on to Tatiana? She might have some uh, answers to some questions I've noticed. Uh, let me mute myself. Uh, where am I? Again. No, I don't think there are any questions. Ask, no? ask, ask them. You. you ask them. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't see. Sorry, guys. Uh, I see them. I'll tell you. Okay, so why don't you put yourself back on and then we answer the question. Is there any? I can mute myself now, all right? I'm mute. Okay, guys, if you want to, uh, if you have any questions, we're very, uh, you're very, very welcome. Obviously, all finance questions are to us. All non-finance questions can be to me. And I can see the chat box, so I can, um, yeah. But if you think of any questions. I can answer your questions too. If you think of any questions after this, um, you can email those over to us and we can um, uh, give you answers on those if you can't think of anything right now, but then something pops into your head uh, maybe later on today. So uh, you can uh, email those to our uh, email address that we've given. Well, I didn't hear it. I can hear what Nancy was saying. She's not saying anything at the moment. Okay. So, guys, any, any other questions, anything else we need to say? You would like to ask us to comment on anything? Uh, any questions you have? Yes, we do have a question about Bitcoin. Is Bitcoin safe to use? I'm not sure uh, in what sense it is safe to use, whether it's secure and easy transfer, if, if it's... Um, Private, it's a, it's a yeah. Scam. If you mean if if it's a scam or not, no, absolutely not. Uh, but uh, yes, absolutely secure. Is yes, yes, secure. You you do need to be careful, of course. But um, and, and you you need to be careful about indicating your address and that the address is right, and so the amount that you're sending is correct because it's not reversible. It's all immutable as the name suggests. Uh, someone is saying, thanks for the great session. I will send my questions in an email. Yes, please do. We will, we're very, um, well, you're very welcome. We're happy to answer these questions. And can you say there was a question about echoing? Yes, we do have computers in one room and that's why we feedback. Um, How can startup companies use, use data analytics? Um, 
do they need a team for it? Well, I'm, I'm not really all that familiar with the data analytic um, uh, side of it, but if you have a specific question, I, I personally promise that I will find the answer for you. So if there is, uh, if you are very specific, what exactly do you mean? How big is your company, etc.? I'm very happy to answer this question. Um, on the data analytics side, um, Sadia, um, there are companies that um, you pay a small amount that do data analytics for you. Um, but again, um, it depends on what you're looking for. So. Um, that there are companies that can do it, but if you give us more uh, detail on what you're looking for, then we can help you further. Well, I don't think there are any more questions. So, uh, shall we easily? Uh... Yes. Thank you guys for joining. And uh, do you want to say anything now? No, thank you everyone. Thanks for joining us and letting us the opportunity to talk about the issues that we're all uh, concerned with and also an opportunity to present the novel. Well, thank you. Oh, one message. Uh, I will write to you guys. Okay, thank you. Echo, sorry. Okay, I'd just like to say thank you, and if you need well, any, any yeah. type of advice relating to finance, just send us a, uh, an email, and um, definitely that will help you during this uh, tough period. Uh, thank you guys again, and um, thank you for joining. We're looking forward to your emails, and uh, see you next time. You never know, maybe soon. <laughs> All the best. Ciao. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you.